This video will cover section 8.4, both of the tests, inverse tests, and matrices and matrix equations. Um, we already uh, reviewed the first paragraph, I'm sorry, the introduction paragraph of the lesson, so you may read that on your own. So before we start with the, with the lesson, um, what it applies to matrices, let's just review a little bit of what is the multiplicative identity for real numbers. And so for real numbers, when I say multiplicative identity, I'm referring to a number that when you multiply it by that, um, let's say a number that when you multiply it by two, you get two. So what is that number? One. One. So for all real numbers, one is the multiplicative identity. Not the inverse, the identity. Okay? So to generalize this, we can say that A times 1 is equal to A. All right. Uh, now, if we translate that into matrices, uh, let's call that matrix A. What is that matrix that when you multiply matrix A by, you get the exact same matrix? Just I. Uh -huh. Yes. So, and, and you're a little familiar with it from the previous lesson, right? So the identity matrix is the one that has ones across the main diagonal and zeros everywhere else. So since matrix multiplication is not commutative, we have to show it both ways. So then I times A is equal to the same matrix A. All right. So we could say that matrix I is the multiplicative identity of all square matrices. So remember when we say square, is, uh, that means they have the same number of rows and columns. So let's go to the next slide. Um, so I want you write, guys to write some stuff here. We have the multiplicative identity of order n is a square matrix of order, and when I say order, I mean dimensions, n by n, with ones down the main diagonal. and zeros elsewhere. And here we have two clear examples of the um, identity of a 2 by 2 and the identity of a 3 by 3. So ones across the main diagonal, zeros everywhere else. Um, so the concept of the identity helps us define another concept, which is the multiplicative inverse of a matrix. Uh, before we get to that, let's just review quickly what is the multiplicative inverse of all real numbers. So if I have number 2, what can I multiply number 2 by to get a 1? <coughs> 1 half, very good. So in general, for any real number, let's call it A, the multiplicative inverse of that will be 1 over A. Right? So we could also say it is the reciprocal of it. And so the idea here is that if you multiply a number times its uh, multiplicative inverse, you obtain the multiplicative identity. And remember, there is such a thing as an additive inverse and an additive identity. Okay? And those are different. What is the additive identity of real numbers? Zero. That will be the additive inverse, and zero will be the additive identity. Very good. Um, so let's go back here now, going back to matrices. So we're going to have, let A be an n by n matrix. If there exists an, another 
n by n matrix, um, let's call it A inverse, such that if you multiply those two matrices, the product is equal to identity. And remember, we have to um, show it both ways because matrix multiplication is not commutative. So then if you obtain that, then you could say that A inverse, the matrix that we're calling A inverse, is for sure the multiplicative identity of A. And these concepts, they actually come very um, handy once we start solving systems by using the uh, inverse method. All right, so we have two matrices here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to show that B is the multiplicative inverse of A. So what we need to do is multiply one times the other. And if we obtain identity, then we will say, yes, the, uh, B is the inverse of A. So since matrix multiplication, again, is not commutative, So um, we must show that A times B is equal to identity and also that B times A is equal to identity. Okay, so I'm going to do the first one and then you guys will do the second one on your own. So what I'm going to do first uh, is write them down. So for A I have negative 1, 3, 2, and negative 5. For B I have 5. 3, 2, and 1. And since I'm multiplying two square matrices, it's not really a big deal to check the dimensions, but just so that you remember, we have a 2 by 2, we have a 2 by 2. We must check, uh, we must make sure that those two numbers are equal. If they are equal, that means yes, we can multiply them. And so the dimensions of the resultant product are going to be 2 by 2. So we're going to have two rows, two columns. So what I'm going to do first, for this entry, I need the first, first row of the first matrix times the first column of the second matrix. So this is what I need. So I'm going to multiply negative 1 times 5, that's negative 5, and then 3 times 2, that is positive 6. Then for this entry here, it's first row, second column, so I take the first row times the second column. So that will be negative 1 times 3, that is negative 3, and then 3 times 1, so that is positive 3. Um, then we, I move to the second row, first column. So that's going to be second row, first column. So we'll have 2 times 5, that is 10. And negative 5 times 2, that is negative 10. Uh, lastly, I have second row, second column. So it will be second row from here, second column from here. So 2 times 3 is 6. And negative 5 times 1 is negative 5. So 6 minus 5, it is, or negative 5 plus 6, it is equal to 1. Negative 3 plus 3 is equal to 0. 10 minus 10 is equal to 0. And 6 minus 5 is equal to 1. And so that is how you do matrix multiplication by hand, now with the calculator. On your exam, exam, take from exam, exam four, which I'm going to give to you tomorrow, uh, that one, you will have to show me matrix multiplication like that. Okay? You cannot just give me the answer because I will assume that you did it with the calculator and you want to earn all the points, right? Yes? You want to get 100 in that test? Okay. All right. So I'm going to ask you guys that you please uh, multiply that. And so don't forget that you have to list matrix B first. So it will be 5, 3, 2, 1, negative 1, 3, 2, negative 5. So please get to work. What did I say? Okay, so um, we got five, 
times the negative 1, so negative 5, plus 6, 6, oh no, 15, minus 15, thank you, and then negative 5, oh, negative 2, thank you, thank you. What else? Plus two. And then what else? Six minus five. Six minus five. Okay, thank you. So that was one, zero, zero, one. Okay, so since A, B, is on the same slide? Yes, and B, A equal identity. Matrix B is A inverse or the inverse of A. All right, let's go to the next slide. And I believe you do have a question like that on your test, okay, that you have to prove two matrices are equal. So please refer to your notes. The answer is right there. You just have to look for it. You just have to read. You don't have to go to Google and type anything. You just have to look at your notes. <laughs> All right, uh, now how do we find the inverse of a matrix? So we're going to start with a 2 by 2. There's a pretty easy formula to find it, but um, before we use the formula, uh, we're going to do it the long way so that you appreciate the formula a little bit more. And you're not like, oh, this formula is so hard. Actually, it's not. It's pretty simple. So I'm going to teach you the long way first because I want to make you suffer. All right, so we have a matrix here, matrix A, and we're going to just let the inverse of matrix A equal to this. W, X, Y, and Z. That's it. And so what we're going to do is create two systems of equations. You can see them here. And we're going to solve for W, X, Y, and C with numbers. So um, let me show you how we're going to get to the systems that you will see already written here on your notes, okay? So we start by definition. Matrix A is 2, 1, 5, and 3. The inverse of it is W, X, Y, and Z. And so, by definition, we know that if we multiply a matrix times its inverse, what are we going to get? Negative infinity. Yeah. Fraction. Something that starts with an I? Identity. Identity. So that will be 1, 0, 0, 1. We, are, we know that for sure because we are forcing the variables to be the inverse. Okay? All right. So now, we're going to multiply here. And we already know we're going to get a 2 by 2 matrix, right? So let's see. We multiply first row times first column. So that will be 2 times W plus 1 times Y. So that is 1Y. Then we move to the first row second column. So that will be this first row second column. 2 times x is 2x, 1 times z is just z. Now we move on to the second row, so second row, first column, second row, first column, 5 times w goes here, and then 3 times y goes here, positive 3y. Then we move to second row, second column, so it's second row, second column, 5 times x, and then 3 times z. And so the product of those two, we already, we already know, is equal to identity. So now by the uh, property of equality of two matrices, we know that this equation uh, has the location of first row, first column, right? So that is equal to the entry here, first row, first column. And so that is why we have that equation is equal to 1. 
Now, if we look at this one here, that is second row, first column. So that should equal what? Zero, zero right? The zero here because they, they have the same location within the matrix. And so that's how we get um, that equation there. And that's how the system um, is formed. Now, similarly, we can look at this equation here, and that is equal to zero. We have it here. And then 5x plus 3z is equal to 1. And that we have it here. So that's how the two systems are formed. Now we're going to solve for the systems, which is actually a really good practice for your take-home exam. Uh, the, the chapter that we still need to cover when we come back from spring, from Thanksgiving, uh, from Thanksgiving break, uh, we still need to cover chapter 7, which is systems of equations. First section is, is systems of 2 by 2. Second section is 3 by 3. Third section is not covered by the E to C curriculum. And the fourth and fifth sections, those I need to cover. So please pay attention. This might help you out with your take-home exam. Because uh, those problems will already be there. However, the take-home exam is not due until Friday when you come back from the break. Yes? So could you spell out uh, the substitution Uh Yes, you could, but I don't want to do that right now. I just want to cover uh, another method, which is elimination. But yes, uh, if you want to do that, that's fine. OK, so elimination. So what I want to eliminate here is the y. Um, so what I'm going to do is I want, a, I want the coefficient of y to be negative 3. So because of that, I'm going to multiply the whole equation by negative 3. So then I will get negative 3 times 2w, that will be negative 6w. Negative 3 times y, that will be negative 3y. And then negative 3 times 1, that will be equal to negative 3. Second equation stays the same. And then I'm going to add the two equations. So that will equal to 0. We might say it cancels. Here I have negative 6w plus 5w, that is equal to negative w. And negative 3 plus 0 is negative 3. However, I want to know what w is equal to, so I'm going to multiply by negative 1. And that will give me w is equal to 3. Now that I know one of the numerical values for w, um, I can go and substitute uh, the numerical value for w into equation 1 or equation 2. It doesn't matter which one. However, I find it easier if we use the first one. So 2w plus y is equal to 1. So this will be 2 times 3 plus y is equal to 1. So 6 plus w is equal to 1. y is equal to 1 minus 6. So y is equal to negative 5. And here we have our second numerical value. Now what I would like for you guys to do is that you solve the system that is on the right side also by elimination. And I will just suggest that you try to eliminate z by multiplying that by negative 3. Wait, can I ask why you're multiplying by negative 3? Yes, yeah, so what we want to have is um, opposite coefficients. So here the coefficient is a 1. So how can you make a 1 turn into a negative 3? So that would be by multiplying it by negative 3. Now, if you wanted to uh, cancel the x, then you will have to multiply the first one by 5 and the second one by negative 2, something like that. Okay. Okay, so um, after making a few mistakes, I got that. So negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, and then negative 3 times 0 is 0. 
So I got x is equal to negative 1. Then you substitute it into equation 1 or 2. And so uh, I like the first one. So 2, substitute x with a negative 1. So we have our four numerical values, right? Yes? So now we can write down the matrix for matrix inverse, for A inverse. So we have for W, we have a 3. For X, we have a negative 1. For Y, we have a negative 5. And for Z, we have a 2. And so that is the inverse. That is the long way to get an inverse of a 2 by 2. So, of course, there is a better way or shortcut, um, or you may say a formula. Uh, before we look into the formula, well, you, you could see it there already. Um, let's just write down some statements. So, if a square matrix has an inverse, that inverse is unique. So, no matrix will have two different inverse matrices, okay? Only one. Uh, only square matrices have inverses. Um, if a square matrix has a multiplicative inverse, the matrix is said to be invertible or non-singular. If a square matrix has no multiplicative inverse, then it is called singular. If we were using matrices to solve a system of equations, which is not the only use for matrices, okay? But if we were, and you encounter a matrix that has no inverse, that means that the system has no solution and therefore is inconsistent, okay? Yeah? Okay. Huh? And if it has no solution and it's a two by two, how would it look graphically, Miguel? It's okay, just answer my question. So if a system is inconsistent and it's a two by two, how would it look graphically? Two lines that are what? Dima. <laughs> Parallel lines. Thank you, Dima. Uh, <laughs> I didn't say it. I didn't say it. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on. I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings today. Okay, so matrix A is invertible if and only if this product here, which is by the way called a determinant, that's what we're going to talk about tomorrow. If AD minus BC does not equal zero. Because if AD minus BC is equal to zero, then if we divide, get the reciprocal of that, have one over zero, that is undefined, right? Yes? You guys remember that. We cannot divide by zero. So we're going to say that if that is equal to zero, then A does not have an inverse. And therefore, it is singular. And I promise you that if you are ever in a class and your, your professor is talking about that, and you know that, and you answer, you're going to feel so smart. And you're going to be like, thanks, Ms. Bevan, for teaching me that. Um, <laughs> well, you can't even remember parallel lines, so I'm not expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's put that formula in practice. So I'm going to write it down here. So A inverse. So of course we need to do the reciprocal of the determinant. That is AB minus BC. 
And then we are going to get a number there. It might be a fraction. It might just be an integer. Um, and then what we do is that with A, the original matrix, we will call the entries A, B, C, D. So for this one, what we do is A and D switch places. And B and C will change to its opposite sign. Or in other words, they get multiplied by negative 1. Oh, thank you. Thank you for saying that. So if, if reading that, if B is positive, it will turn negative. Or if B is negative, it will turn positive. Okay, so let's write it down for those of you with bad memory. So A and D switch places. So B and B and C uh, multiply, get multiplied by negative 1. Alright, so A inverse, following the formula, it will be 1 over the product of those two numbers, negative 1 times 4, minus the product of negative 2 times 3. And then what we do here with A and D, what happens with negative 1 and 4? They switch places, 4 and negative 1. And then negative 2 will turn into what? 2. two. And then positive 3 will turn into negative, negative 3. Okay, now we still, you guys I remember in Algebra 2 when I cover this, you guys were awesome about doing that part, the switching and changing the sign. But however, you used to forget to multiply by this constant here. Okay? So let's finish that process. So it will be 1 over negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. And then here we have negative 2 times 3. That will be negative 6. But we have another negative here. So that will be plus 6. Now once we do the switching and uh, changing the sign, we always do that only do that once. So you don't have to do it again. You just carry that over. So what is negative 4 plus 6? 2. 2. So we have 1 half times 4 times 2 times negative 3 times negative 1. So now what I want you to do is distribute that negative, um, that, I'm sorry, that positive 1 half. So this is like scalar multiplication, right? Multiply a matrix times a number. So that means you multiply, you distribute that number to every single entry. So of course, 1 half times 4 will be 4 halves, that is equal to 2. 1 half times 2 will be 2 halves, which is equal to 1. Uh, 1 half times negative 3 will be just negative 3 halves. And 1 half times negative 1 will be negative 1 half. Okay, so do we have any questions? No? Please, don't be shy. No? Okay. So that is the inverse. So it's pretty easy, right, with the formula? Yeah, Lorenzo, what do you think? Okay, now the fun part, the inverse of a 3 by 3. Miss, do you generally enjoy math? I do. I don't enjoy teaching it anymore. <laughs> because... <laughs> Oh, no, no. Not because of them. Uh, because of politics. Give me your phone. Ah, uh, you got me. <laughs> you won't get in until the end of the day. Okay, so um, we're going to move on to it, the inverse of a 3 by 3. So what we're going to do, and I'm not going to do the whole, like, 
the long way, but I will just explain to you how it will look like if we were going to do it. So we have X1, instead of using WX, YZ, we were going to use X1, Y1, Z1. And then we will have X2, Y2, and Z2. Uh, and then we have X3, Y3, and Z3. So if we were to create systems like we did before by multiplying first row times first column, we will get something like this. Yes. And then first row, first column, we will get that one. And then third row, first column, we will get this one here. Okay? So that's what happened. And then if I just copy the coefficients of the original matrix, which is this one here, so we will have negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, 4, 5, 0, 0, 1, and negative 3. Now, if we were to solve that matrix um, by using the coefficients that we used to see here, 1, 0, 0, uh, 0, 1, 0, and so on. So by doing, by performing a, um, a series of row operations, so let's write down after performing row operations, um, we will end up with identity on the right side. And then whatever's on the, I'm sorry, identity on the left side, and then whatever's on the right side, that will be the inverse of the matrix. And so that is what we're going to do next. And trust me, uh, after you do this, Gauss Jordan will just seem like a joke. So if we were to solve the systems like the long way, 15, negative 12, negative 4, <coughs> 4, negative 3, negative 1. I'm taking those numbers from this matrix, which happens to be the inverse. Negative 5, 4, and 1. So that will be the inverse. So let's just go over the steps that we have listed here. And so what we're going to do is write down for any A inverse, oh, I'm sorry, to find the inverse of a matrix, make sure it is a square matrix, because only square matrices have inverses. Uh, and that is if they have one. So we form the augmented matrix that will have the original and then the identity on the right, the multiplicative identity. Uh, then we will perform row operations so that we can reverse, um, so we can make that matrix look like this one here. So we will have identity on the left, and then the new matrix that we find here, that will be the inverse. Um, so this process is equivalent to Gauss Jordan. And then it says here verify the result by showing the multiplication. Um, on the test, you could just verify your result with your calculator. I will be okay with that verify the result. You still need to find it by row operation. Okay, so let's get started. Started with the fun. All right, so we're going to find the multiplicative inverse, okay? This is going to help you understand Gus Jordan, I promise. My second period fell that way. And I know you guys are smarter than that. That's not true. That's not true. Second period. <laughs> okay, so let's start by writing the matrix. 1, negative 1, 1, 0, negative 2, 1, negative 2, negative 3, 0. On the right side, we need identity matrix. 1, 0, 0, 
zero one zero 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 one. Okay, and we actually have two steps already there done, right? Because we already have that one here. Yes? And remember, just, just to clarify, we need to work by column. So first we make that one, and after that we make that zero, which is already there, and then we will turn that into a zero. After we're done with that, then we will move on to the second column, but the first thing we must do is the one, all right? Okay, so we already have this one. That means that R1 is the leading row because we're working on the first column. Once we move to second column, R2 will be the leading row. So what we need to do here is make negative 2 in R3, a 0. So we're going to multiply, use our leading row, which is R1, times the additive inverse of negative 2. So what number, when you add it to negative 2, gives you a 0? Positive 2. And then we will add that to R3, because that's the row we're trying to change. Let's copy the first two rows. Okay, so R2 R, I'm sorry, R1 times negative 2 is going to be 1 times negative 2, I'm sorry, positive 2. Um, R1, so 1 times 2 is 2. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 2 is 2. And then we have 0 times 2 is 0. 0 times 2 is 0, again. And then don't forget, we need to add R3. So can uh, Genesis please read R3 for me from the previous step, because I can't do it. Negative 2. Uh-huh. Negative 3. 0. Uh-huh. 0, 0, 1. OK, thank you. So now we add the two rows. 2 minus 2 is 0. Negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. 2 plus 0 is 2. 2 plus 0 is 2. 0 plus 0 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. So now that one is my new R3. 0, negative 5, 2, 2, 0, and 1. Now we are done with the first column. We move to the second column, but the first thing we need to do is that negative 2 must be turned into a, a 1. So now we're going to make negative 2 in R2 a 1. Now remember, when you are trying to get 1, you will use the multiplicative inverse. So R2 times, what is the multiplicative inverse of negative 2? 1 half, positive or negative? So we have a negative, so we need a negative so that we can get positive 1. So that's what we're going to multiply times the second row. So let's copy R1 and R2. Three, because they're not changing. All right. So zero times negative one half is still zero. Negative two times negative one half is just one. One times negative one half will be negative one half, but don't worry, the fractions will disappear eventually. 0 times negative 1 half is still 0. 1 times negative 1 half is just negative 1 half. And then 0 times negative 1 half is 0. OK, so now we are done with that process. We have this 1 out of the way. And now what is next for us to do is uh, make this negative 1 into a 0 and this negative 5 into a 0, right? 
We're not going to do anything to the third column until those two numbers turn into zeros. Yes? All right. So now our leading row is going to be R2 because that's the one that contains the one. We're done with first column. So would you guys be okay if I do that in, in one step? So? Yes. Okay. So we're going to use R2 times what is the additive inverse of negative one? Yeah. One. And we add that to R1. Now, on the third row, we're going to use R2, our leading row, times what is the additive inverse of negative 5? Positive 5. And we add that to R3. So let's just copy our row 2, the leading row, don't forget. How can we use our one? Oh, we will. No, no, I mean, like, because first you did the negative 2, right? Yes. Oh, be, that's a good question. Because we always have to make the 1 and then the zeros. Oh. Yes, that's a must. Mm. No, it's the same. Yes. Um, all right. So R2 times 1. So that's this, the same row, right? Multiplying the same row by itself. So let's see. 0, 1, negative 1 half, 0, negative 1 half, and 0. So this is R2 times 1. And then to that, we got to add R1. So, Peru, can you read R1 for me, please? From the previous step. Annette, read R1. 1, negative 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. All right, so let's add those two rows. 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. Negative 1 half plus 1, what is that? 1 half, 1 half. 0 plus 1 is 1. Negative 1 half plus 0, what is that? Negative 1 half. And what is 0 plus 0? 0. Okay, so that is our u r1. It goes here. 1, 0, 1 half, 1, negative 1 half, and 0. Okay, now I'm going to do this step here. So we're going to multiply r2 times 5. And so that will be 0 times 5 is 0. 1 times 5 is 5. Negative 1 half times 5 is negative 5 half. 0 times 5 is still 0. Negative 1 half times 5 is negative 5 half. And then 0 times 5 is 0. To that, we're going to add R3. Okay, Yvette, would you please read R3? Zero. Uh -huh. Negative five. Uh -huh. Two. Two. Zero. Five. Okay. So zero plus zero is zero. Five minus five is zero. Now here we have a little problem, but it's okay. Negative five halves plus two. So negative five halves plus two is the same as negative five halves. How many halves are in two? Four. Four, Four halves. So I promise you guys, if you are not good with fractions, you need to start getting good at them. Okay, so we have here uh, negative 5 halves plus 4 halves is equal to negative 1 half, right? So that's what goes here, negative 1 half. Here we have 0 plus 2 is 2, negative 5 halves plus 0 is negative 5 halves. 0 plus 1 is 1. So let's go ahead and complete that row here. 0, 0, negative 1 half, 2, negative 5 half. Thank you, and 1. All right, so we are almost done, I promise. Or do you guys move on on it? No? No. Oh. Okay. So um, what is the next step now? 
We're done with the second column. We move to the third column. What is the first thing? Find the one. Find the one. What would you say, Sean? <laughs> okay, so first you find the one. You make that into a one. Then you make the zeros. Okay, it must be that way. So uh, we have a negative one half, so it makes sense that what we do is that we multiply R3 times the multiplicative inverse of negative one half. So that could be the reciprocal, which, Andrea, I need your phone. Okay, so put your shoe down. So in this case, the reciprocal of one half is what? Two. two, and then of course we need negative, right? So that we end up with a positive answer. So let's see. Let's go ahead and copy R1 and R2 because nothing's going to change to those yet. Wait, so when you're finding a 1, do you use the additive or the multiplicative? The multiplicative. So when you're finding the 0, do you use the additive? Yes, very nice. It's like we rehearsed that. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yeah, so uh, th that was very well said. When you're finding one, you use multiplicative inverse. When you're finding zero, you use additive inverse. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Yaren. Thank you. All right, so now we're multiplying that R3 by negative 2, right? And I can't see R3. Um, so, Raquel, can you tell me please what R3 equals to from the previous step? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay, thank you. So negative 2 times 0 is 0, negative 2 times 0 is 0, negative 2 times negative 1 half, that would be a 1, negative 2 times positive 2 is negative 4, negative 2 times negative 5 half is positive 5, and negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. If you are not sure why negative 2 times negative 5 half is 5, you just need to write it down, okay? It's very simple. So that will be positive 10 over 2, which is 5. All right, we're done with that. Now, so two more steps and we are done, I promise. So now we need to make this positive 1 half a 0. So we will say our leading row is now R3 because we are in the third column. So R3 times the additive inverse of 1 half, what would that be? A number that when you add it to 1 half, you get 0. Negative 1 half. And you add that to R1. And then we will do R3 times, what is the additive inverse of negative 1 half? Mm -hmm. Ezekiel, sit up. Additive. Because we're trying to make a 0. Positive 1 half. And then we add that to R2. Let's copy the third row. Okay, so R3 times negative one half is going to equal to the following. Zero times negative one half is zero. Zero times negative one half is also zero. 1 times negative 1 half is negative 1 half. Negative 4 times negative 1 half, that would be positive 4 half, which is equal to 2. 5 times negative 1 half will be negative 5 half. And negative 2 times negative 1 half will be positive 2 over 2, which is positive 1. Uh, we're adding to that R1. R1 is 1, 0, 1 half, 1, negative, 1 half, and 0.
So why don't you guys do that? We're adding our one. Come on guys, don't wait for me. I'm not gonna be holding your hand while you take your take on sound. All right, zero plus one is one, zero plus zero is zero, negative one half plus one half is zero, two plus one is three, negative five halves minus one half, how many negative halves do we have? Negative six halves. And what is negative six divided by two? Negative three. And one plus zero is one. That is our new R1. Okay, now let's do this part here. And that's the last one, I promise. So R3 times 1 half. That's going to be 0, 0, positive 1 half, negative 2, positive 5 halves, and negative 1. And then we're going to add R2, R2 from here, 0, 1, negative 1 half, 0, negative 1 half, and 0. Okay, 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, negative 1 half minus 1 half is 0. Two, negative 2 plus 0 is negative 2. 5 halves minus 1 half. How many halves are those? 4, four halves. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Negative 1 plus 0, negative 1. Okay, I'm going to give you some advice. <laughs> Once you are done with your first column and your second column, those numbers are not going to change. I promise. So that might save you a little bit of work. So now, um, what have we accomplished? <laughs> we found the inverse. That's, that's all. So we could say that the inverse... A inverse is equal to, uh, Lorenzo, would you please read the numbers of the inverse? <laughs> the very last one that was on the right side. Oh. Uh, so, from your paper. On oh, the bottom or like the whole thing? Like, the whole matrix? <laughs> Or right here, right here, this one. Yeah, Okay, so read the first row. Uh, one, zero, zero. No, 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 on the right side. Oh. Oh, three, three, one. And then? Now, we're actually going to use that inverse, okay, on the next problem. Yeah, stop looking at the clock. Okay, so I need you guys to be quiet. Okay, so now solving a system by using the inverse method, this is what it means. Um, you first need to create a matrix with the coefficients. Okay, so here we have a system, the coefficients, and we have to make sure we line them up x, y, z. So we will have, um, Jonathan, please tell me the first row. What would that be? One. Zero, zero. No, from here. Oh, my bad. The coefficients. One, negative one, one. Second row. 
zero, zero, we get two and one. Thank you. Third row. We get two, we get three and zero. Very good. Now, that is what we call the coefficient matrix, okay? Now, the matrix here, this, this will, will contain the variables. So that will be, what are the variables from the system? X, Y, Z. And the third matrix, which we'll, we will refer to it as matrix B, that will contain the constant terms. So Adelina, what are the constant terms? From here, right here. Okay, so now let me show you quickly with algebra why, how we're going to do it and why it works. So if we start with a system like this, matrix A times matrix capital X is equal to capital B. What we're going to do is multiply both sides by the inverse matrix. And so we already went over this. What do you get when you multiply a matrix times its inverse? Identity, right? And what is a matrix times identity? It's like multiplying a number by one. You get? The same matrix. So to solve the system with the inverse method, we're going to need the inverse of the coefficient matrix times the constant matrix. We did that in algebra 2, but not that much. Um, so here's the same thing that I explained to you algebraically. It's stated in uh, a sentence. So if you have a system of equations like that, um, the unique solution to that system will come from multiplying the inverse of the coefficient matrix times the constant matrix. Okay, now we're going to do that. The good news is that for this uh, system of equations, we already know the inverse, okay? So matrix A is the coefficient matrix of that one. 1, negative 1, 1, 0, negative 2, 1 negative 2, negative 3, and 0. And we already know what the inverse is, right? Um, Annette, could you please tell me the inverse from the previous example, the very long one that you guys love? 3, negative 3, uh -huh. 1, 2, 2, negative 4, uh -huh. negative 4, 5, negative 2. Thank you. All right. So to solve the system, what we need is the variables uh, that will equal, which we know we have the letters x, y, and z. And so we need to multiply the inverse times the constant. So 3, negative 3, 1, negative 2, 2, negative 1, negative 4, 5, and negative 2 times the constants. And what are the constants? Over here, 2, 2, and 1. Thank you, Sean, and Jonathan, whoever that was. Okay, um, the right side is the same, x, y, z. And then here, let's just check the dimensions. This one is a 3 by 3. What are the dimensions of this matrix? 3 by 1. Can we multiply? Yes. Yes, because those two numbers match, right? But if we had, uh, if they had them switch, if we had them switch, could we multiply? Mm -hmm. No. So that's why it's important that the inverse remains on the left side. So let's go ahead and multiply. Well, let's see. What are the dimensions of the resultant matrix? Three by, three. three by one. Very good. So it will be a three by one. So we're going to have three rows, one column only. So let's start. So first row times the column. 3 times 2 is 6. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. 1 times 1 half is positive 1 half. Then we move to the second row. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. 2 times 2 is positive 4. 
negative one times one half is negative one half. Then we have third row times the column. Negative four times two is negative eight. Five times two is ten. Negative two times one half is negative two halves, which is negative one. Yes. Um, so now we just need to combine the terms. Negative six minus six is zero, so we get one half. Negative four plus four is zero, so we get negative one half. Negative eight minus one is negative nine, plus ten is positive one. So what that means is that x is equal to one half, y is equal to negative one half, and z is equal to one. And so we are done with the system of matrices. Uh, so we're going to stop here, and then tomorrow I will finish this problem and start 8.5.